Well, how are they guys and girls? Um, seagulls or something? Flying around? <laughs> yeah, um, did some work on my car yesterday. Uh, huh. Naturally, as soon as you come out recording, somebody wants you. Anyway, uh, yeah, I did some work on my car yesterday. I think I fixed the oil leak it had. Sorry for any wind noise. Um, <clears throat> see, there's a few spots down there. Right, we're leaking. Uh, I suspect it was leaking from the camshaft uh, cover. Oops. A car. Oh. Well, I've not had this thing running since yesterday. Well, since before yesterday, actually. So it's uh, it's a bit low on voltage. I did have the radio playing a bit. <clears throat> Let's see if it'll go. It might be a bit rattly on startup because it's got to it's got to fill up all of the oil lines. Because the oil lines on this were not, <clears throat> were all cleaned out. There was actually quite a bit of, um, quite a bit of a uh, uh, thingy on the oil lines. Quite a bit of um, crud, you know, uh, like black carbon stuff. Uh, it wasn't very good at all. Uh, hey, my vacuum fluorescent clock there, which does change if you cover up the light sensor. It does dim it down a bit. <clears throat> it's not going to work at the moment because it's a bit bright. You can hear the ticking noise of my uh, hour meter. Right, oh, I did also put in, uh, and I've fully wired up my uh, my lights now. And I've got it so that they're on a switch as well, so I can have these ones lighting up. And of course, being me, they are fully colourised as well. Red, blue, green, and if I want to I can choose them to be white by combining all three colours together. Which is, as you can guess, quite nice. It means I can have quite a bright uh, little light for when I'm doing stuff like on my radio or something, which also is now wired in. There's people on that already. Huh, how about that? <clears throat> but yeah, it's, uh, it's all well and good, that is. It's uh, pretty nice. But yeah, anyway, that's not what we're out here for. Right, now all the people have disappeared. There's a couple of people. Let's see what it sounds like when we start it up. <clears throat> so I'm going to put my foot on the clutch just to be just to be quiet. Let's try and start this thing. See what it sounds like. Yeah, a bit rattly. But I've got oil pressure anyway. Oh, there you go. The rattles are gone there. Just, just took all that time to fill the uh, to fill the um, thing up. Need all the on it. Oh. I'll, have a, I'll have a look underneath at what I've done under there. It's pretty good. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, I went mad with the spray paint and I decided to spray my um, cam cover. <laughs> well, it sounds okay. Sounds like I got the timing right anyway. I had to take all the belts off and see to do it. Holy wind! Looks, I actually think we're going to get some quite heavy wind. Um, at some point. Well, that sounds all well, happy and well. It's a bit tappity, but it's not bad. It will be tappity because uh, the oil rail, if you look on my posts on Fiat form, you will see that the oil rail was absolutely blocked up completely. So some of the cam lobes was not getting any oil whatsoever. Um, and obviously some of the lobes was getting oil. So yeah, yeah, a bit, uh, a bit bad really that. So yeah, I, I should really uh, replace the camshaft completely, camshaft and shims. But um, <clears throat> I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to do that now. I've just replaced the uh, the gasket. 
The only reason why I've not started it up yet is because I'm li I was literally waiting for the uh, the gasket sealant to uh, to cure. Because um, I'll just leave it until it gets up to a nice working temperature. As um, <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for the uh, for the gasket sealant to cure. Uh, so you know, yeah. I, I left it overnight to do that it's because uh, I know that a lot of people um, actually uh, repair an engine, you know, with all sealant and stuff, and then they start it up straight away. And I don't know. I think that contaminates the sealer. You know. Uh, well, I, I don't really want this to, uh, to, you know, to leak on me anymore. I know it's, uh, you know, the car looks the way it does, but. <laughs> I don't want it to, uh, you know, to have an oil leak because I don't want to have to keep replacing the oil. So what I'll do, obviously, is I just keep, um, you know, just changing it around. I'll turn my heater off because it'll help warm the engine up a bit more. <clears throat> I really need to get these uh, wired into something. I don't know what. It'd be nice to wire one into the indicators. You know, wire wire another one into something else. Uh, another one into something else. That one's actually come out. Like that one. Oops. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to get them fully wired in. There you go. Let's push it back in again. They're only tie wrapped in. Someone even tie wrapped. They held in with food tie things, as I always call them. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They actually, you know, they work. So why the hell not? <clears throat> Let's give it a little rev and see what it sounds like. That sounds happy enough. I really need to get my my uh, my analog rev counter wired in. It's been sat on the dashboard for ages now, and I thought it would have come off by now, but it actually sits there pretty good. Um, I've just got that one there, which is from a lawnmower. <laughs> I don't think I am doing 5,507 uh, well 570 RPMs there. I think it's a bit off. But uh, I don't know. It's uh, one of those ones where you wrap it around one of the spark plugs and it gives you the uh, the reading. But obviously, with this being a twin coil, it um, it picks up twice. So you have to set this thing into some weird mode where it goes into like twin coil mode and yeah, it, it, it yeah weirdness. Oh, there's a the remote control for me. Thing. Let's just have a look at that, shall we? Uh, can't really see it very well. Uh, the actual sensor's down there somewhere. So that's supposed to be white. We've got blue, green, and we've got red. The red looks pretty good. I mean, in red you can actually drive with that on. It's actually quite nice. That. You know, so, you know, with these closed up, you know, you can actually drive around with the red on. Uh, I, have it, I have it set to green all the time because through these it's not that bad, it's not very bright. But uh, you could uh, you can actually drive with this part of the light on, you know, this this part on. And it, uh, it works quite well. I need to do something more for the back of it. So I've actually ordered another dash cam. Uh, the same one as what was in my old, my old, well my other car, it's part around the mat. There's the camera <laughs> falling down. <clears throat> And that happy little fellow runs all the way around here. <coughs> I think it goes underneath here somewhere. I think. I'm sure that's where I put it, underneath this lip. It doesn't appear I have. Uh, it'll turn up somewhere. Oh no, wait, what's that? Oh, there it is. There's the plug for the dash cam. That one there. Can't really see it on the screen, so the thingy. That's it there. So that will go into the uh, into the front dash cam when it gets here. It means I will have a spare rear camera. <laughs> That's a brand new one, never been used. It's still got the plastic wrapping on it. Look. Yeah, I've got a glove box there from out of a uh, something or other car. Um, Ford Galaxy 2004 version, I think it is, or 2002. And I really need to do some. Oh, I have my insurance documents come through. Uh, telling me I'm all legal on this car now, so my insurance is all fully valid. I'm not in like the uh, the waiting stage, you know. I, I was legal before, but 
in the UK you uh, <clears throat> you have a thing called no claims bonus and uh, what that means is um, what that means is uh, your say you've had insurance previously with another company <clears throat> you then have one year worth of insurance where you've not made a claim you know you've had no accidents if you've had no accidents uh, so what that what what that means is that um, it gives you basically a discount you know a year's discount of, of insurance not a full you know massive in price but it's just something that they do to help you um, you know to help you get you know, a better price Oh, the neighbour across the road waving at me. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, and then obviously I've got four years now, no claims bonus. So that obviously come on to this car now, and that's reduced my insurance down considerable. Uh, you know, considerably. There you go. I'll get the words right. So what I've uh, what what I've what I've done now obviously is uh, I've got this insured and I sent me documents off and they were like okay you've got it insured but can you prove you've got the no claims with it being a different company so uh, you know they send you a letter through all old-fashioned you know paperwork no online or anything and they can't just take your word for it you know you've got to uh, you've got to get both insurance companies talking to each other and they will say yeah he's got four years here you go you know continue it on and if he doesn't have a crash in this year's worth of insurance then he's got five years yeah, obviously, but if you have a crash, then you'll lose all your no claims bonus unless they're protected. But I didn't go for the protected insurance, sadly, um, because yeah, <clears throat> I'm a cheapskate, really. Um, trying to drive on a shoe, you know, on a shoestring is not easy, but I do manage it. Um, I have obviously gone full out and declared every modification you see on this car, uh, the bigger engine and all the roof rack and everything. Even some mods that aren't even on here yet, like the uh, like the window grills, the bars that are going to go down the windows, uh, they're already you know insured. The tow bars insured, um, but obviously it's not on the car yet. It will be eventually, but <clears throat> just not yet. Uh, I've got to do some stuff with those window grills before I get them on the car. I need to. Um, I think, I, I think I'm going to clear lacquer them, but I'm going to I'm going to use a lot of clear lacquer uh, because uh, they, they they look rusty and I want them to stay rusty. But in the UK, if it's rusty, it's classed as a bad thing because if someone brushes past it, yeah, you've got problems. Uh, you know, they, you know, and they hurt themselves. Uh, yeah, you can have your car taken off you and all sorts for, you know, for um, being unsafe to drive in. I mean, I've had people say to me, "This is unsafe with having the, uh, you know, the." barbed wire stuff wrapped around the ball bar but it's not barbed wire it's just string with knots in it and then it's like painted with a a powdery silvery stuff I mean, I know in the end the powdery silvery stuff does all come off and it just leaves you with a black wire you know a, a black string with knots in it it still looks like barbed wire but yeah. <clears throat> it's only a temporary thing <clears throat> but yeah it's all good I see my voltage is pretty good now I've got the alternator kicked up actually a pretty stable alternator on this car it's only a 60 amp alternator but it, it, it does work quite well if I rev up you'll hear a ticking noise there you go I'll try and get the revs just right very hard to do you can hear that ticking noise that's actually the um, the canister the um, evap canister solenoid which um, which lets the fuel tank breathe through the inlet manifold so to speak the uh, the you know the um, the hell's it called yeah the inlet manifold through the vacuum of the engine that reminds me actually I have got a vacuum pipe in here so oh, I have there you go see that guy used to sit up here somewhere that guy used to sit up there like that and then I used to have my vacuum thing, which has been blocked off with a light bulb. Yeah, you know, my bodges. They're all good. Yeah, but that's got a vacuum on it, that has. So I need, that's to hook up to my, um, not my boost gauge. That's for a, uh, a turbo car. 
No, uh, my um, my vacuum gauge. You know, it tells me if I'm running economically or not. Yeah, another things I got for this, I've had them for a while. Like the uh, caution: do not lower your windows in excess speeds of 200 miles per hour. It's for a, it's for an aircraft. But uh, you know, I thought, oh, I'll get, I've got to, I've got to get them. I've got bloody paint all over my fingers. Look, I got to get them because you know, a bit all right. And when this stick off I'll just stick tape over them or something try and get them to stay on and clear lacquer or something I know clear lacquer is pretty good stuff for sticking stuff down with I might use that I want to get my speed uh, my speed sensor wired in because that's what that is that's a um, it's like a speed camera detector it's more of an interesting thing really rather than something I'm actually going to use because I speed I don't speed you know even though it is quite easy to speed in this car with it having the bigger engine you know 200 cc's I tell you the difference is quite impressive um, in the in the other car on the other little Fiat Panda with the standard carburetor engine you have to use the whole of the throttle in this you've only got to use like that much and then you've got all of that much all the way down to the bottom which is uh, you know which is extra power so to speak it's amazing um the problem is my foot kind of like you know kind of wants to sit in certain positions and um normally if i'm on the motorway my foot's pinned to the deck normally you know not all the way but just enough but this you've only got to have it down a little bit and it stays at the speed it's it's amazing what difference fuel injection makes it really is yeah <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, look, my hour meter's cl clicked up a little bit more. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting stuff. It really is. Apparently I'm doing 5,000 RPM. It's like 500 RPM. <laughs> but, yeah, I really want to get this wired in. I just want to set it up onto a... Uh, it should have a little... Oh, there you go. It is on Velcro, like. But it's... Uh, Initially, what I wanted to do was all these different lights. I was going to have the speaker on a switch and just have it so the lights come on. Because all these different lights on here, sadly, they're 1 volt each. Well, I think 1.5 volts. But the uh, LEDs I've put in these things here are all 3 volt LEDs, which is you know, a bit naff. <clears throat> but, um, yeah. Originally, what I, gonna, what I was going to do was just tap into one of these pins on here. Uh, run a live, you know, from this. I think I think it works through earth in them, and that's why it makes the LED come on. Uh, run the live down through into the dashboard, and then bring it into here. Have all these have a live go to them from the thing, which will be on a switch as well. <clears throat> and um, yeah, it would uh, just light up. Obviously, with um, with no switch on, it would be nice just to have random flashing lights lighting up on the dashboard. You know, as you're going down the road, it looked look quite good. A bit annoying, but that's why you put them on a switch, you know, just have it so those ones flash. Or you just turn the whole thing off. It's only one of those cheap, really cheap Chinese jobbies. It was in the shape of a, uh, I think it was a Lamborghini. <laughs> but uh, I just took all the case off and now I've got it uh, just bare on the dashboard. It looks, I think it looks better, it suits the car more. It's even got a little uh, waveguide on it as well, you know. If you know what a waveguide is, it's, uh, it's this little horn thing here. What it receives the, uh, the radar through. Yeah, it's really cool. Anything it doesn't do is, is laser, even though it's got an L on it, you know, to tell you that it'll do laser. And that thing there should be the thing that, I, I think it's that. Oh, no, that's the speaker. Uh, somewhere on here, there is actually a place where a receiver should go. Oh, there you go, my fans come on. It just shows the temperature. Crikey me, I've been talking for a while. <laughs> Anyway, guys and girls, I think I'll cut it, for, cut it here because that's me talking for a long time. Boring stuff. Yeah, so there you go. That's just uh, that's just some fun that I've been doing recently in this. Um, it's not the original tax disc for this car, sadly. This car was last on the road in 1997. That's when it was last on the road. So it's been off the road since, and I come along rip it to shreds, turn it into a wreck, and then get it back on the road again. There you go. And I'll put my heaters on now as well, I think, just to cool the engine down a little bit. Oh yes, they work so well. 
It's one thing you can say about Fiat Panda heaters, they work really well. Either you get some that don't work, or you get some that do work, and this one, it really works. And if you rev the engine up a little bit, and you get, really get the water flowing around it, I tell you, it doesn't off come on, hot. That's hot, it hurts your hand to hold it there. <laughs> They're really good. But yeah, I'll wait for the fan to turn off, and then I'll shut it off, and I'll go back inside and render this video. Thank you very much, guys and girls, for watching, and I will catch you on the next video. Peace out.